Ayan, good to see you again tonight. Great to be here. And so this had to be a terrifying ordeal for you too, personally yesterday. When you heard this news, did the thought occur to you, this could have been me? Yes, it occurs to me every time I see or read about a terrorist uh, incident that it could have been me, because and, and it could have been you, it could have been all of us. Uh, you've seen how at times they're indiscriminate and how at times they have this planned. When we see this action and we see these, you know, it, dressed in black with the guns going in and just murdering everyone in front of them, <laughs> we think this is lunacy. I don't, I don't understand it. Yeah. You actually do understand this ideology. I understand it, and uh, they make it very clear what it is that motivates them. We know that this is an ideology, a political ideology, that is embedded, unfortunately, in the religion of Islam, a religion practiced by multitudes of people who are not violent themselves. We know this. What we fail to do over and over again is to make this connection, and we fight. Uh, we are fighting an as asymmetric war where we fight with military means and counterterrorism means, but we are not fighting back with ideas. Mm -hmm. But how, how can we? How, About our how? Own you look at a place like <laughs> Paris where the Muslim communities are very segregated, they don't integrate into Parisian life. We're going to talk about this later in the show. What do you do? You force them not to go to the mosque, not to listen to the elders within those particular sects who are com communicating to them Sharia law and the rules as they see it? What we are seeing now is there is a vacuum, there is a, a, a vacuum of morality. If Western society doesn't Again, I'm using the word instill and inculcate the values that have made the West so peaceful and prosperous through schools, through the media, through academia, through every possible peaceful cha uh, channel of educating minds. What happens is you have a vacuum. And vacuums like this one are usually filled by evil terrorist ideologies. And what we are seeing is an Islamist evil terrorist ideology. That but I don't but know. isn't it true, Ayan, that people are afraid to talk about radical Islam? They're afraid because they're afraid of offending the Muslim community. You yourself, when you make remarks about this, get condemned. You get st shut down from speaking. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you've made remarks about Islam as a whole that are also controversial. But, but as soon as you go there, people label you an Islamophobe yeah. and they want to shut you up. So there is a combination of fear on the one hand that if journalists say I, I've been talking to journalists all day long what you know if we republish the cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad then they'll come and firebomb us they'll come and shoot us so there is that rational fear of if we do something then you know a violent act will follow there's that fear but then alongside that from the West I think and especially on the liberal side is a deep-seated pity people feeling sorry uh, for the Muslim community. And when the Muslim community members, leaders say we are offended, we feel so sorry for them that we can't bring ourselves to offend them. But the way to get them out of that is to give them firm and tough love. And tough love is a love that that is inclusive, but that asks the right questions in the hope and, and you know, challenges these values. And that's what we need to do now. How do we get there without condemning Islam? The New York Times came out yesterday and said Islam is not to blame. Howard Dean came out and said these people who committed this crime are no more Muslims than I am. Mm -hmm. And there seems to be you know, a rush to very much say it, that the religion has nothing to do with this. Yeah. And that argument of the New York Times and Howard Dean, with all respect, is now, has now become redundant. It is no longer relevant, in fact, that there is a very strong link between what happened yesterday, what happened in Peshawar, Pakistan, what is happening today as we speak in Yemen, in uh, Nigeria, in, uh, in you know, uh, Iraq and Syria. All of that violence, you can no longer divorce it from the religion of Islam. You can no longer div divorce it from the Prophet Muhammad or from the Quran. Once we acknowledge that, then we can start to put together on the battlefield of ideas a way to defeat them. Do you wish you hadn't made the movie? Back absolutely, 20, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I feel the only way to really fight, the only way we have a chance of fighting these barbarians is by talking about it, by expressing ourselves. And I do it by peaceful means. I write, I collaborated in a movie, and I still believe the pen is far more powerful, far more powerful than all their guns. And it's worth it to you, despite the danger that has obviously been posed to your own life. It is worth to me because I love life. 
more than I love death. They love death. That message is so much stronger than anything they put out there.